OK, so uh, once again, I'm Brandon Litherland, uh, NASA Langley, and uh, for the VSP workshop, we're going to talk a little bit about the open VSP to charm automation process. So again, just as a review, charm is a comprehensive error mechanics rotorcraft model. Uh, we talked about all the things that it can do for the performance, aerostructural loads, et cetera. The thickness and loading noise and stuff was just covered by Dan through um, WAP WAP, PSU WAP WAP, output to ANOP 2. So just a couple of visualization examples uh, here from say a, a regular rotor or uh, in the case of this one, it's an example, say high lift propeller in front of a wing, just showing what uh, some of these solutions can look like. And so the, the open VSP to charm automation originally was created uh, by Alex Gary at Uber uh, and then further developed by Jason Wellstead uh, here at NASA Langley. And the automation tool really does make it quick and easy to generate the charm input files that are necessary to execute from an open VSP geometry. So things like rotor and wing objects are built using open VSP parameters. The open VSP model interaction is handled by the API. So all of this stuff can be done by just querying the open VSP model and pulling parameters or even going in and setting and changing them. What we're doing kind of behind the scenes is building these Python objects from template files, modifying all of the settings, and then at the end of this process, writing those input files, and if you need to, executing charm. And so rather than doing a bunch of uh, file in out operations. All of this stuff is being done in memory right up into the point where you're you're executing things. Another thing that is really wonderful about this process is that there is broad parallelization of trade studies and parameter sweeps. So the runner utilities that are packaged along with uh, OpenVSB can send, all, send multiple single case runs to your processors. And so you can set these things up as say an array of arrays and you can do full factorial, you can do Latin hypercube, lots of different ways to send these off. But in that sense, you're relatively unlimited by the size of study that you want to do. But your, your ability to run parallel cases is again only limited by say the number of processors that you have access to and the number of licenses that you have. So the uh, because again, we're running through the API, all of these open VSP model and charm input parameters are able to be altered in real time from the script. You can change things, you can sweep them, add that to your uh, parameter sweep. And if you want, you can create your own optimizations within these Python scripts. So if you want to run things like genetic algorithms, for example, and try and iterate on the best version of an aircraft, you can certainly do that. The other benefit here is that you can post process charm results and you do not need a charm license to accomplish this. You just need the files that are written. So if someone else is running the charm solutions and you want to create the visualizations, the process will do it. So you can take single or multiple runs and build them into a data structure for processing. And the line and contour plot options are built in. So you can see some examples of these on the right hand side of the slides and they will Either print these out um, just one after the other, depending on how many runs you did. And you have access to things like your aircraft performance, rotor performance, pressure and velocity information, force and moment data. Um, and you can do things like, you know, rotor contour plots and, and things like that and look at rotor specific information. So the requirements. If you want to run cases, you are clearly required to have a charm license and be able to run. But again, the post processing does not require this. You just need the data to build on. You do need to have the open VSP API and the open VSP to charm automation Python packages installed. Uh, both of these distributions are with open VSP, so you can simply build them. Uh, and the examples that I'll show in this presentation and a quick demo that follows uh, are assembled in Jupyter notebooks. That's highly recommended. But a similar IDE can be used if you choose, but Jupyter Notebooks makes it very seamless and easy to, to operate these things. So let's get into a bit about your OpenVSP model setup. The uh, components are easy to write out and we'll, we'll show where we pull things in from a charm set. So you can have a full vehicle buildup and whatever it is that you want to run from charm, you just include in a VSP set and only those things are going to be included in your analysis. 
So any structural or non-lifting thrusting components are generally excluded, particularly when you're taking a first stab at building this stuff up. Down the road, kind of like Dan showed, if you want, you can include bodies and fuselages using that plot 3D format. And some best practice is to reduce your sectional resolution as low as feasible for things like wings and rotors, because when it writes these things into the object data and then tries to create the input files, each one of those sections that's shown on your model is going to get written out as a section in the rotor model. So you don't need all those if all of you have is a root and a tip, and it's a linear sweep between the two. So you only need the root and the tip. Use as few cross sections as you need. Um, to make sure that the model is updated in memory, make sure and save the model so that all the changes that you make in the OpenVSP model are updated and stored so that it can be queried. Oh, and uh, a word that you can download all these NASA UAM reference vehicles at the link here at the bottom of the screen. So this is an example of the six packs uh, quad rotor reference vehicle. There are a number of others. Uh, Dan showed several examples like the lift plus cruise and the tilt rotor, etc. So when we're talking about building these default rotor wing objects in Python, the input automation builds these from the template files, like I said. So it has an idea of what information needs to be included, and then it modifies or adds to these files as needed. So uh, one example function that does it for rotors is this build default rotor settings function. Another one for the wings is build default wing settings. And so here we've got an example of the templates uh, down here in the bottom, kind of in the middle. And you've got a run characteristics input file. You've got a rotor wake input file and a wing wake input file. The charm automation takes all that stuff and builds upon it. And then this block on the right is an example of the files that are created from this process. And it's all just, it does it. Um, so the template files themselves, some are included with charm. Uh, some of them you can find in the charm test folder from the, the package that comes with OpenVSP. Or, uh, you know, as Dan said, if you need something particular, you can probably reach out to CDI or uh, other users of charm and try and see if you can get a, a template file that way. So let's talk a bit about modifying these objects. And so, as I mentioned, because it's all run from the API, these settings can be altered for all rotors, all wings, paired symmetric copies, or individual instances of a rotor. So think in VSP, if you have a single rotor and you have symmetry turned on, the one on the left is another rotor, but you can modify the parameters for both of those at once, just the one on the right, just the one on the left, or any of them that are grouped as families. And so in this example snippet that we have here, you can see that we're opening and reading and build the defaults using these two functions here. So there's that build default rotor settings with some of the options that are included here. And then we're taking that rotor settings object and we're changing things like the collective. We're changing the RPM of that rotor. We're using the utilities that I talked about the other day where we're doing a SRC is just the shorthand for simple rotor calculations that I imported at the top. So we're specifying thrust, we're specifying the altitude, and we use the RPM and the radius, and it gives us the thrust coefficient that we need to dump into, into the charm setting. And down here at the bottom, what we're doing is we're altering that lattice. So we're giving it four cord and 40 span wise sections. And so these are just a few examples of the ways that you can alter those things while you're in here. If you're ready to run cases, you can build up these scripts, modify the input files, and execute a run just as a line by line script. But again, the parallel submission of multiple cases really enables these rapid explorations and your trade space explorations. So you can perform sweeps, you can alter the open VSP geometry and start changing things like your rotor diameter, your twist distribution, your core distribution, change your vehicle size, change the placement of rotors, you know, you name it. If you can do it through the API, you can do it here. And the runner utilities, again, assemble all these variables that you define as an array of arrays to any type of execution that's here. So it's full factorial, you can do random, you can do Latin hypercube, you can, again, write your own. And the, the really cool thing about this is as long as you have these parallel processors, like Dan mentioned, each case is run on a single processor. So if you happen to be on a cluster that has 40 or 100 or 200 or 1,000 processors available when you 
say check out a node, then you can run up to that number as long as you have that many licenses. So in the time that it takes to run one case, say at an angle of attack, you can run 40 or 100 or 1000 in the same amount of time. And so you can really spread this stuff out and speed your design space explorations, and you're only really limited by the number of processors. So a word on visualizing the run data. The line and contour plots are generated for any run case. Again, you don't need a license to do this. You just need the data. Uh, the line plot and the polar plot functions are there, or you're more than welcome to import and create your own. And uh, multiple plots are generated once for comparison. So remember that first slide where I had several different plots right under one another. That was a sweep of angle of attack showing how the disk loading is changing. Um, and so an example here on the left, you can see we've got circulation just along the, the blade span. And it's just a, an example of these snippets where you're saying, I want the line plot of rotor one for the last revolution. And I want to plot circulation and a certain number of size it's moving around. Um, kind of the same thing here. Uh, because these line and contour plots are basically matplotlib, you change the keyword arguments in those so you can change the colors, you can change the ranges, you can alter them just as you would any other Python plotting. The rotor data is uh, that we've got here is just one example of the data from a charm run. So we can't go all the way down into the depth of, of how, how much information is really available here. So these uh, rotor results can exist as a pandas data frame. So anybody familiar with data processing in, in Python and pandas know that these things are really easy to iterate on and go and pull specific snippets of information out. Um, and there, at least in this uh, simple rotor result case, there's over 20 variables uh, available just for this data block alone. And so there is a charm automation user guide that's written in HTML that, that should build with the uh, workflow whenever you compile the, the charm automation process. And that's in the charm doc HTML, and then it's the user guide. So it will walk through the documentation on what each of these inputs are, what you can do to alter them, what it needs to run. Um, and it's, it's a very useful tool. So if you start to get lost, uh, please go to that document. Yeah, I'm doing good on time. And for uh, visualizing the data, you can run the run v6p with a path in your case name. So it's going to take those output files. It's going to create these SGP format and the graphics cases that you can visualize in Vortex X. Now, uh, in most cases, you'll take these from, say, the cluster that you're running on and bring them back over to your computer so you can build up these visualizations. But just a couple of example here, you can see that there's a uh, quad rotor 50 foot per second forward speed case with the free wigs, kind of like Dan was illustrating in his presentation. Uh, and you can also do fixed wigs. So there's you know several different ways that you can try and piece these things together. But here are just two simple examples of running these things in slightly different ways. Um, but in each of these cases, this is run from a Jupyter Notebooks through the API and it, it executes everything. And so as far as the presentation itself, uh, that's, you know, the summary for the slides. We are going to step through an example of one of these notebooks where we can kind of go line by line and show you what's being modified, uh, how it's going. And uh, because I, I didn't want to rely on trying to do everything live on the server while we were doing the demo, I made a, about a five minute recording that will walk through one of these and show how fast it runs. And so you can start to get uh, information that way. So uh, while I switch over to that, uh, any questions before we go to uh, the kind of live walkthrough here? Yes. So uh, for the licenses, uh, you'll have to reach out to Continued Dynamics and then try and, and catch information that way. So the when you're running parallel, it is by license. So if you have 10 licenses, you can run 10. Um, and it's also uh, restricted. So if you have two users, you know, each one is using one instance of the license. It's kind of like each time you you run the code, it pulls up one of the, the pieces. But yeah, um, you can reach out to, to Dan or Continuum Dynamics and then I'll sort out the, the licenses. Anything else? Okay. So, all right, let me pull this video over here. So 
Um, maybe I can. Uh, that's subtitles. Uh, OK. So I'm going to start this video over. Uh, there shouldn't be any audio or anything because I'm just going to kind of speak to what's going on and uh, we'll see uh, an example here. So as we walk through this, this is an example of that high lift propeller wing case. And so at the, the top, we're just inputting the packages. We're talking about the utilities, the rotor calcs, things that we need, defining paths. And this is the function itself that defines and changes things. So we've got, you know, our templates. We're telling things where the path is. We're saying here is my open VSP file and we're starting to set the charm set right there. So it says look for this thing inside the open VSP model. Remember, I talked about using renew and clear VSP model to initialize your scripts and now we're changing things. We go in and we're setting these uh, airspeed, the collective, the tip speed. Um, and computing the, the RPM again using simple rotor calcs. And uh, as we plot through, we're building the default rotor settings. So those objects that are going to build up to where we can eventually write these files, changing a few of the settings for this case. And we also do the same thing for the wing. So we're altering some of these. We're changing that span and cord wise uh, uh, setup setting up the, the angle of attack here. And here is where we're writing the input file. So it's build charm input files. It's using all of this information. And down here is where we're actually telling it, take this stuff and then we're going to start running it. And so this is just a way to define where these files go and how they're named. This one is where I'm setting up a timer. I'm defining my range of variables from zero to 20 using five, uh, five unit step increments. And I'm running full factorial on this. So basically I'm running an alpha sweep in this case. And so there's some visualization stuff down here and you'll see that I'm going to run all. And all these little asterisks means that it's processing through. So you notice that it's kind of stalled right here and all of these cases are running at once. And it's saying, you know, there's a, a warning that says can't create this directory. We already made one because I had done this prior to. It's just a little sanity check. And so each one of these cases is turning the rotor. It's doing the prop wing interaction. It's doing the tip vortices. It's, it's doing all of what it needs to do. But what you should see here in just a moment is that each one of these cases is going to say one's done and then all of the others are going to hit right after. So they all kind of complete right at the same time. And yep, see case complete, case complete, case complete. So that's how fast it runs. And you can run five of these just as fast as you can run 100 if you have that many processors. And so here it's saying your results are stored in memory at that location. It's telling you, you know, some example output data. And now we're getting into the line plots where we're plotting each of these results from, in this case, the, um, the rotor. Uh, in this case, we're looking at rotor number two, which happens to be the wing. So we're looking at the circulation on the wing. And then as we get up to about 20 degree alpha, you can see that the section behind the prop is is being blown upon the circulation on that wing section is changing and here uh, at zero degree angle attack for the rotor nice axisymmetric profile on the disc but as we you know sweep up in alpha you start to see that that circulation loading on the rotor changing so it's it's picking all this stuff up you get angle of attack effects and p factor and all that good stuff and so down here at the bottom this is an example of that pandas data frame for your row data you can see that there are 8,000 different points here where you can look at the last rotation, the first rotation, anything in between, and you can look at all of the variables, uh, all 20 of them that go all the way out to the right. So that is uh, more of a live demo of how one of these things would execute in Jupyter Notebooks. Again, it's very quick to run something simple like this to try and run you know, the quad rotor case with four sprinting rotors with five blades each uh, using a free wake solution at, you know, slightly forward speed. It's a bit more complex. Yeah, it might take two, three minutes or so to run that case. But again, you can run as many of them as you want. So I could, you know, here uh, I was running on our, our Linux server over it at Langley and I could just, you know, run as many as I wanted really. So because I was able to um, start up my session, this is the, the Jupyter Notebook running on our Grayskull server. Um, 
And so here again are the utilities we're bringing in unit conversion. We're doing simple rotor calculation and our runners. Um, I just I wanted to time some of these, so I put the the time package in here. But here's where we're bringing in the input automation as charm and we're uh, output as charm out and uh, setting up some paths. So this one is the example for the quad rotor, just for a little bit of a comparison to um, the high lift propeller one. So again, here you can see we're passing the alpha degree as the input from the function. So down at the bottom, when we say here is this array of things, pass this to this function, it inputs each one in a row and then executes. And so we give it our templates. We say that my charm set is the group of components that we want to modify or bring in and interact with. And uh, then we start dealing with the uh, characteristics file name, where these things are. And because this was just rotors, I don't need a wing input at all. So I just ignored it in this case. Um, so this case name is where it's going to start labeling things that it starts to write out. So quad test is what it's going to start calling the things that it needs to recognize later. It's going to make the directory for it. Um, this is the initialization of the VSP API again, just good practice there. And here is where we're starting to use the open VSP API to get the IDs of the components that we're changing, right? So we're finding the geom with the uh, front right rotor, front left, rear right and rear left. And so each one of these are given a unique ID that we can then query and pull parameters and change things. We are pulling the design or pulling the diameter from OpenVSP using get parm val. And then we start setting some other parameters like our airspeed, the collective. Now this is just an initial guess. You can run it, find out what charm thinks it's going to be. And then in future cases, you can give it a better initial guess, or you can just set it to zero and let charm do its thing. Um, and set a tip speed. And here again, we're using that simple rotor calculations to, to pull out some of this information. So I've only got about four or five minutes left. So we'll kind of clip through the rest and then show where uh, some of the other magic is happening. Again, uh, here we're starting to build these settings. So we're building the objects. Again, changing some of these things like the RPM, setting the collective, getting a target thrust for our thrust coefficient. And then down here, we're doing our airspeed and building the files. Now you can see we've got our rotor settings go in from our uh, Python object. We get our velocity from these calculations here. We're giving it a certain number of revolutions uh, and other charm settings that, that we don't need to go into here, but you can set these things here with this build input files. We're setting up these uh, string characters to make, you know, when it makes a, an individual results case, in this case, it's saying that my airspeed in feet per second is blah, and my alpha is this, because that's what I, I swept. I gave it a feet per second, I gave it a certain alpha. It will write the directories for each case for you. And then uh, down here is where we're doing, you know, the charm output is run charm. We're doing this, the command is run v6. And uh, at the end, we're There you go. <laughs> um, so here I'm just giving it an A range uh, from negative 10 to 20 using five step increments. I tell it to run full factorial using that range. And uh, and down here, it's you know just timing everything out. And so I gave it, um, you know, this case it ran through, did its thing, and then down here it is searching for the results. So we're doing, again, the line data plots. We're giving it the first rotor, last revolution, circulation, and your size. So it gives these you know, nice line plots for your variables that you're interested in. And same thing, I changed the color map to hot just because it makes kind of an interesting picture. You can set your, your max uh, range here using Vim and Vmax. And then we will Let's see if it actually pulls this stuff up. I don't know if it'll be in memory. No, it's unhappy with that. Oh, oh yeah, because the VPN dropped and it's it's cranky with me. So um, anyway, yeah. So the so you should be able to write out the anop two files from here. Do, will the notebook run the PSU wop wop? 
Yeah, and uh, Dan's saying here online that if the, the default input files that are used as those templates have the right settings, then Charm will run PSU WAP WAP for each case. Um, and so you can also, he says, you can also do the ANOP files automatically. So, um, yeah. Cool. There you go. It's a, yeah so so it, it would run it but the, there wouldn't be an automation step to bring that stuff right back in um at least with, without parsing um yeah so for the recording the question is um is there an intent to try and integrate this process with the rco tools um and the the like the rblt tool chain loops and stuff like that so um I think the intent is to bring that stuff in the loop from VSP and, and run charm so that when we're we're doing these iterations and things, it, it loops everything in. I think that's that's the plan or if it's not already there. And so uh, I'm giving the same talk at the RBLT workshop here in a couple of weeks. So we'll do an open VSP presentation to the group and then this live demo will be shown in the, the afternoon. So that part is not virtual. That's, you know, in person only. Um, but we are going to be covering this again, and so the, where that stuff ties into the the RCO tools and, the, and that integration will be able to be discussed uh, in the room there. Yeah.